Namu Shakyamuni Buddha. Namu Shakyamuni Buddha. Namu Shakyamuni Buddha. Words for opening a suture. The unsurpassed, profound, and wonderful Dharma is difficult to encounter in hundreds of millions of yons. I now see and hear it, receive and uphold it, and I vow to fathom the Tathagata's true meaning. Suture of the Past Vows of Aristobulistava, Chapter 8, Praises of Lord Yama and His Followers. At that time, from within the Iron Ring Mountain, Lord Yama and his following of infinite ghost kings came before the Buddha in the Triad Stream Heaven. They were the ghost king evil poison, the ghost king many evils, the ghost king great argument, the ghost king white tiger, the ghost king blood tiger, the ghost king crimson tiger, the ghost king spreading disaster, the ghost king flying body, the ghost king lightning flash, the ghost king wolf tooth, the ghost king thousand eyes, the ghost king animal eater, the ghost king rock bearer, the ghost king lord of bad news, the ghost king lord of calamities, the ghost king lord of food, the ghost king lord of wealth, the ghost king lord of domestic animals, the ghost king lord of birds, the ghost king lord of beasts, the ghost king lord of mountain sprites, the ghost king lord of birds, the ghost king lord of life, the ghost king lord of sickness, the ghost king lord of danger, the ghost king three eyes, the ghost king four eyes, the ghost king five eyes, the ghost king chili shin, the great ghost king chili shin, the ghost king chili cha, the great ghost king chili cha, the ghost king no cha, the great ghost king no cha, and other such great ghost kings. With them were hundreds of thousands of minor ghost kings who dwelt throughout Jamdavipa, each presiding over certain jurisdictions. Aided by the Buddha's awesome spiritual strength and the power of Orstobrisdava Mastava, all these ghost kings joined Lord Yama in the Trayastrimsha heaven, and together they stood to one side. Then. Lord Yama knelt, placed his palm together, and said to the Buddha, What another one? Aided by the Buddha's awesome spiritual strength and the power of Orstobrisdava, I have been able to come here with all these ghost kings to join this great assembly in the trash stream heaven, which will be very much to our benefit. There is now a small doubt that I should like to express. And we hope the world under one will be compassionate and resolve it. The Buddha told Lord Yama, I will answer any question you would like to ask. At that time, Lord Yama looked respectfully at the world under one, made obeisance, turned his head to acknowledge Erstobrisdava, and then said to the Buddha, World under one, I observe that. Erstobrisdava uses hundreds of thousands of expedient devices to rescue beings who are suffering for their offenses within the six paths of rebirth. I see that he does so unstintingly, without the least fatigue. Although this great Buddhistava uses his inconceivable spiritual penetration to do such deeds, it does not take long for the beings whom he has helped in gaining release from retribution to fall into the evil path again. World another one. Since Aristobulistava has such great inconceivable spiritual powers, why are beings not able to rely on him to stay on the good path and to be freed once and for all? Please, world another one, explain that for us. The Buddha told Lord Yama, the beings of Jamdavipa have stubborn and obstinate natures, difficult to tame, difficult to subdue. This great Bodhisattva continually rescues such beings throughout hundreds or thousands of eons, causing them to obtain liberation quickly. For those beings undergoing retributions even in the worst destinies, 
the bodhisattva apply the strength of experience to educate them from their own basic karmic conditions and lead them to understand the events of their past lives. But because beings of Jamdavipa are so bound up by their own heavy bad habits, they keep revolving in and out of the various paths over and over. As this bodhisattva labors throughout many long years to entirely effect their rescue and release, they are like people who, in confusion, lose their way home and take a dangerous road by mistake. On that dangerous road are many yakshas, tigers, wolves, lions, serpents, and vipers. Those confused people are sure to be harmed very quickly on that dangerous path. But then they meet a knowledgeable guide, skilled in avoiding all the potential harm, including the toxins of the yakshas and others. This mentor begins to lead the travelers of that dangerous path, saying, Be aware, everyone. What business has brought you onto this road? What kind of special skills do you have to avoid all those dangers? Hearing that, the confused travelers realize that they are on a dangerous path and turn back, attempting to escape. The kind guide then tells them to join hands, lead them off the dangerous path, and help them avoid the deadly peril. When they reach a safe road, the travelers are relieved and calm down. Their guide then says to them, Take care, confused ones never to get back on that path again. Once on it, it is hard to get off. It can destroy a person's very nature and life. The travelers, who have been confused, express their deep gratitude. And as they are about to part, the mentor said to them, If you see any other travelers, whether you know them personally or not, be they men or women, tell them that dangers and evils on that path could destroy their very natures and lives. Do not allow them to unwittingly bring about their own death. In the same way, Aristobulistawa, replete with great compassion, rescues beings who are suffering for their offenses and enables them to be born among humans and gods, where they enjoy a wonderful bliss. Once those offenders are released from the suffering they experienced on the path where their karma took them. They must never go down those roads again. They are like the lost people who mistakenly took a dangerous path and were led to safety by a kind mentor. They know now to never take that road again. Moreover, they exhort others not to get on that road by saying, we took that road ourselves when we got confused, but we escaped and now we know better than to ever get on that road again. If we were to set foot on it again, we would get confused and be unable to recognize it as the dangerous path we took before. That being the case, we might lose our lives. The same holds true for falling into the bad destinies. Due to the powerful expedient means of Aristobulistawa, beings can be freed and gain rebirths as humans or gods. If they were then to turn around and enter into the bad destinies again, those with heavy karmic bonds might remain in the hells forever, with no chance of escape. At that time, the ghost king Evil Poison placed his palm together respectfully, addressed the Buddha and said, World Honored One, each of us, countless ghost kings of Jamdavipa, bestows benefit or inflicts harm upon beings differently. However, karmic retributions cause those in my retinue to do more evil than good. Nonetheless, when we pass by a household, a city, a town, a garden, a cottage, or a hut, where there are men or women who have cultivated as little as a hair's worth of good deeds, even if they have hung up but one banner or one canopy, used a little incense or a few flowers as offerings to images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, recited the sacred sutras or 
burned incense as an offering to even one sentence or gasa in them. We ghost kings will respect such people as we would the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. We will instruct the smaller ghosts, each of whom has great power, as well as the earth spirits, to protect such people. Bad situations, accidents, severe or unexpected illnesses, and all other unwelcome events will not even come near their residence or other places where they may be, much less enter the door. The Buddha praised the ghost kings. Excellent, excellent that all of you ghost kings join Lord Yama in protecting good men and women in that way. I shall tell Lord Brahma and Lord Chakra to make sure that you are protected as well. When that was said, a ghost king in the assembly named Lord of Life said to the Buddha, World another one, my karmic conditions are such that I have jurisdiction over the lifespans of people in Jemtawepa, governing the time of both their births and their deaths. My fundamental wealth are based on a great desire to benefit them, but people do not understand my intent and go through births and deaths in distress. Why is that? When women in Jemtawepa have just given birth to children, be they boys or girls, or when they are just about to give birth, good deeds should be done to increase the benefits of the household, thus causing the local earth spirits to be immeasurably pleased. The spirits will then protect the mother and child so that they experience peace and happiness and will bring benefit to the entire family. After the birth, all killing and injuring for the purpose of offering fresh meat to the mother should be carefully avoided, as should parties that include drinking alcohol, eating meat, singing, and playing musical instruments. All those things can keep the mother and child from being peaceful and happy. Why is that? At a difficult time of birth, uncountable evil ghosts, including mountain sprites, goblins, and certain spirits desire to eat the strong-smelling blood. I quickly order the local earth spirits of that household to protect the mother and child, allowing them to be peaceful and happy and to receive other benefits. When people in such households witness those benefits, they should do marital deeds to express their gratitude to the earth spirits. If instead they harm and kill and have large gatherings involving feasting and entertainment, then the retribution that result from such offenses will be borne by them and will bring harm to the mother and child as well. Moreover, when people of Jantawipa are on the verge of death, I wish to keep them from falling into the evil path, regardless of whether they have done good or evil. But how much is this power of mine to help them increase when they have personally cultivated good roots? When those who do good in Jemtawipa are about to die, hundreds of thousands of ghosts and spirits from the evil past transform themselves in appear as their parents or other relatives in an attempt to lead such people to fall into the evil past. How much more is that the case for those who have done evil deeds? World unknown. When men or women in Jamdavipa are on the verge of death, their consciousnesses and spirits become confused and dark. They are unable to discriminate between good and evil, and their eyes and ears are unable to see or hear. That is why relatives of those deceased people should make generous offerings, recite the secret sutras, and recite the names of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Such good conditions can cause the deceased to leave the evil path, and all the demons, ghosts, and spirits will withdraw and disperse. World another one. If at the time of death, beings of any kind have an opportunity to hear the name of one Buddha or Bodhisattva, or to hear a sentence or gasa of a Mahayana Sutra, 
I observe that such beings can quickly be freed from the pool of their accumulated minor bad deeds that would otherwise send them to the evil path. The exception to that is crimes involving killing that warrant fivefold relentless retribution. The Buddha told the Ghost King Lord of Life, Because of your great compassion, you are able to make such great vows and protect all beings in the midst of life and death. When men or women in the future undergo birth and death, do not retreat from your vows, but liberate them all so that they can experience eternal peace. The Ghost King told the Buddha, Please do not be concerned until the end of my life. In every thought, I shall protect beings of Jamdweba at the time both of birth and of death, so that they all find tranquility. I only wish that at the time of birth and death, they would believe what I say, so that they could all be liberated and gain many benefits. At that time, the Buddha told Arstobodhisattva, this great ghost king lord of life has already passed through hundreds of thousands of lives as a great ghost king, protecting beings during both birth and death. Only because of this great being's compassionate vows does he appear as us in the body of a great ghost king. But in reality, he is not a ghost. After 170 years have passed, he will become a Buddha named No Appearance Thus Common. His young will be called happiness, and his world will be named pure dwelling. That Buddha's lifespan will continue for incalculable eons. A story. The circumstances surrounding this great ghost king are thus. They are inconceivable, and the people and gods whom he rescues are countless. Transference of merit. May the merit and virtue accrued from this world adorn the Buddha's pure land, repaying four kinds of kindness above and aiding those suffering in the past below. May those who say and hear all this all bring for the result for Buddha, and when this retribution body is over, be born together in ultimate place. Namu Amitabha Namu Amitabha Namu Amitabha